this episode was nuts. Freaking nuts. You just get done watching this episode, and you're just like, what just happened? This thing had major, major past revelations. Not exactly Simon and Marcy level major, but it, it, it was pretty up there. First off, when Jake comes back after he's finished downloading the new software on BMO, as soon as he closes his eyes when Finn's about to begin the game, you can tell that something just wasn't right. This whole time that the ghost lady was haunting Finn, she was trying to tell him something. Finn takes a deep, deep trip into his subconscious, like really deep, into his deepest fears, to the vault where he stores all the things that he can't handle. So this ghost lady was once a bounty hunter named Shoko, who worked for a gang known as the Bathtub Boys. Pretty strange. The leader wants some kind of uh, amulet that a rival tribe has down by this apparent river. And at first he says omelet, so at first you can tell this guy isn't very bright. I don't know what kind of gang has an imbecile as a ruler. That's just dumb. So apparently they're enemies with this rival tribe. So this is a lot like when the English colonists came to North America and they fought with the Native Americans over who gets what land and who gets to stay and all that. Turns out this rival tribe is none other than the candy people who are actually building their candy kingdom on this spot. So we see how the candy kingdom was being built and how the structure was put together. And um, we see one of the very first banana guards and just like a banana that isn't ripe yet, he is very green. And he calls to their leader who is none other than Princess Bubblegum. Yeah, she's still she was still living even back then. So this is a problem because now we know that she was not only out of Finn's league, but she was way out of Finn's league. We also know how old old Mr. Cream Puff is. So now that actually makes sense how Princess Bubblegum used to date old Mr. Cream Puff because they were both still young back then, and Princess Bubblegum doesn't really age, so she still looks the same as she did back then. But as for old Mr. Cream Puff, yeah, yeah, he, he got older over the years. And now we see how exactly she was able to date him. This whole time, Bubblegum has been lying to everyone. She's been lying to Finn, she's been lying to her candy people, and she's been lying to basically everyone she knows. She's not 19. She, she's got to be at least 200. I mean, I mean, come on. That's just... I don't even have words for that. Imagine what would happen if Ice King found out that Princess Bubblegum is way older than she actually said she is. Just imagine him finding out that she is over 19 and... At the end of Mortal Recoil, when she became 13, it really didn't matter because she was already at least 200 years old. Shoko becomes friends with Princess Bubblegum. And uh, we find out that Shoko had a really rough past as her parents took her to a dojo and abandoned her there. And they also traded her arm. So Shoko helps Princess Bubblegum build the Gumball Guardians. We get to see how the Gumball Guardians were built and how they were created and how much time Princess Bubblegum spent working on them because they were already almost done. So Princess Bubblegum must have been working on them for years. So as a present for helping her build the Gumball Guardians, um, Princess Bubblegum gives Shoko a gift that was handed to her by a baby peppermint butler. So we actually see how peppermint butler has grown through the years, and we see the peppermint butler is also a lot older than he seems. He seems like he was just a toddler here because he was struggling to walk and he didn't have his fancy butler suit yet, but now we know 
uh, what he looked like when he was young, and just how old he actually is. The gift is a robotic arm to replace the arm that was traded by her parents. So, this gift makes her very sad, because sooner or later she's going to betray Princess Bubblegum to take her amulet. So, when they were first created, the Gumball Guardians weren't very bright, because the night Shoko tries to steal Princess Bubblegum's amulet, we see the Gumball Guardians are constantly standing watch over Princess Bubblegum, when she wants them to stand watch over the entire city and not just her. And even though she insists that they watch the entire city rather than just her, they insist on staying right there. And even when she tells them to go do it, they leave for, I don't know, five seconds and then just come back. So they weren't very bright when they were first created. I can see why Princess Bubblegum put them in that state where they just sit there blankly without doing anything, unless there's an evil presence around, like the Lich. But it turns out that standing there actually did some good, because the moment they turned their backs, that's when Shoko came into Princess Bubblegum's bedroom, which really wasn't fully constructed yet, but that's when she takes the amulet, and the Gumball Guardians sense this, and they turn around and start attacking Shoko. Shoko gets blasted over the edge, and then she lands into the acid river that they've been trying to remove. Being the ninja assassin that she seemed to have been, I really thought she would have had a better escape plan than that. The Gumball Guardians try to get her out of the river on Princess Bubblegum's command, but uh, the acid is so hot that it actually melts the Gumball Guardian's hand. So, uh, Princess Bubblegum just forgets about it and accepts the fact that nobody could probably survive being in that acid, and she accepts the fact that Shoko is probably dead. She just turns her back without doing anything else. This just doesn't make sense. If the amulet was so dear to Princess Bubblegum and very special to her, why wouldn't she try to get it back instead of just forgetting about the whole thing? Right here, you think that she would try to do something to get it back, because it was her special amulet. But instead, right here, she's basically saying, Okay, yeah, this is pretty wrong of Shoko to do this, but since we're pretty much friends, I'm just gonna let her get away with it. Just this once. Classic bubblegum. Always too lazy to put a stop to something. That's why she has champions, like Finn and Jake, to do her bidding for her. You think she, being the science nerd that she is, you think that she would build some kind of like robotic suit so she could do it herself. But no, that's just how she is. But Shoko didn't die. Um, the chemicals just mutated her. And um, later that night, um, she crawls out of the river all mutated. And she actually looks like her ghost form now. So now we know why her ghost form looks nothing like her human form. So now we know how she got that way. The question is, how did she die? So my guess is the chemicals were just too much for her body to handle. And she was eventually just going to collapse because they were so poisonous. So she crawls up a hill where a small seedling ha had just been growing, and she lays beside the seedling, and she dies there with the amulet around her neck. And it turns out that seedling, that little twig sticking out of the hill, uh, turns out that one day that seedling would become Finn and Jake's treehouse. That tiny little seedling turned into Finn and Jake's massive treehouse which is probably almost as big as Ice King's castle. So, it just shows that mutation can really grow things. Flash forward, back to the present. So, Finn understands now, and he calls Princess Bubblegum, because he knows his entire time that the ghost lady has been haunting him so that he can get a hold of Princess Bubblegum, so that she can give the amulet back to her because that
That's what she needs in order to finally be in peace. So when Bubblegum gets there, um, she asks Finn what's going on, and Finn goes over and he removes uh, their refrigerator, and he tears up the wooden flooring, and it turns out that Shoko's body was there the whole time, and that's how she was haunting Finn. I have no idea how she got to um, the haunted house in The Creeps if, she, if her body was right under the treehouse the whole time. So shouldn't she have been haunting that house? Um, so I have no idea why that is. I guess that's just how she did it. Maybe she followed Finn. Maybe she uh, got in his backpack or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she possessed him. No idea. I couldn't help but laugh when uh, Finn yells at Bubblegum for lying about her age. Um, that was just classic. I laughed so hard because this whole time, uh, throughout the entire series, Bubblegum has always told Finn that he is being very childish. And that's exactly what she's doing right here. And then he calls her a weirdo. Um, uh, I'm sure many fans across the world, uh, probably had, did a victory dance when they heard that, because they have probably been waiting. That's what everyone has been waiting for Finn to say to Princess Bubblegum since the very beginning. I know I have wanted him to say that to her ever since Incendium. And, uh, on the inside, when he said that, I was just thinking, Way to go! You finally told off that jerk! So now, Finn feels better that he finally got that off his chest, and now Shoko won't haunt him. One more thing. It's also led on that Shoko is an incarnation of Finn. Um, I don't know how that is possible, but, uh, if you guys have any ideas as to how that may be, just, um, leave it in the comment section, and, um, yeah, so overall, I thought this episode was pretty good. It was funny, um, we got to see how things were formed in the past, we got to see major past revelations, so this episode was a pretty good one, so, um, that's all I have to say for right now, um, thank you for watching, comment, rate, subscribe, bye.